Welcome back to the third installment of the shopping cart for our Georgian computers project. And I'm just going to do a really quick review here. We've got our shop. Okay. And we've built out our cart last week. Okay. And we've got the uh, back button to continue shopping. And then uh, we go to checkout and this is where we left off. So what I want to do today is finish out the remainder of the shopping cart. And um, that should probably be it for the, this uh, tutorial series. Um, however, I'm, I'm actually considering coming back uh, in the next video and maybe doing some uh, CSS work on the front end uh, for customers. And maybe we can talk about some other web development topics. Uh, in terms of a customer service, but we'll we'll have to see how that goes. Okay, so for now, let's uh, let's get into finishing off this shop shopping cart and adding in our uh, payment features. I've gone over to my checkout and um, I'm just I populated some fake data in here, and I just want to show what's going on here. So I populated that, and it, nothing happens. It's got nowhere to go. And you can see in my uh, URL, it says payment. Okay, so I've got nowhere to go right now. So let me go back and notice that it cleared all the fields out of there. But there's also a, another issue that I want to address. You see here, I've got uh, Brother uh, 2540, my this printer, and I've got a quantity of two. And right above it, I've got uh, Brother 2540 and a quantity of one. So when I hover over the, um, the delete button there or link, you can see down in the bottom left corner, it says remove from cart, uh, item 11. And I go to the next one. It says remove from cart product ID 17. Okay. So what I think I'm going to probably look at is updating my cart a little bit so that, um, every time I put in a, a a similar item or the identical item that it doesn't give me a separate line item here like this what it will do is just update the quantity so it's going to go in and say hey is it already in there if so i just want to update the quantity okay so that's something i think i'm going to have to look at uh today it's not vital that i do it but i think it's important that uh, i go and have a look at that so if I go into shop controllers and I have my add to cart method here, and then just down in this spot, I have this create and save a new cart object. So what I can do is, is maybe go in there and, and make that change to the actual cart and to determine if it's already in there, uh, just add it to the quantity. Don't add it to the actual uh, list as its own separate line item. I want to go now and, and actually make that change to my, my cart. So I've got a note in here. I've gone to my add to cart method and I've got a note in here. It says, uh, check if this user's product already exists in the cart. If so, update the quantity. Okay. So there's, there's two conditions I've got to check for, right? Um, the current product I have to check for and also the user's ID so that it's not confused with a different user who's updating. So I have to make sure that both of those things are accounted for. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go in and, and do this and I do apologize again for how bad I type on this screen. It's just that I'm trying to actually get my hands around a microphone and uh, look down at my keyboard when I do this. So anyway, so what it's gonna look like is I'm gonna do a uh, var cart item uh, equals, oh, I, I did, I don't like the way that is, uh, var cart item equals, uh, context dot cart. And I'm going to do this, uh, single, uh, single or default. Okay. And we'll do C, uh, C dot product ID, okay, equals, equals, uh, oops, product ID equals, equals product ID, 
Okay, and the second condition now I've got to check for is the user. Okay, so C dot user name is equal to cart username. Okay, and close that off. And so I've, I've got that. I've, I've checked for those two conditions. Okay, and um, now actually I, I'm gonna put this into an if statement. Okay, so uh, if our cart um, item is equal to null, then now we're going to move all of this into this. Uh, I'm going to move all of this up here so I can put down, hold down the alt and just move that up. Okay. And then I'll do uh, uh, control, control KD and it, it just helps with the uh, formatting. Okay. And then down below here, I've got to move up my uh, context, right? My, uh, cart my add to cart okay and I'm gonna leave the savings down below but now uh, because I've put the if in there I'm gonna now do an else right because I've got another situation going on here and what I want to do here is our context dot quantity Oh, sorry. It's not, uh, that's wrong. Uh, it's not context. It's, uh, cart item dot quantity is plus equals quantity. Okay. No, that's terrible. It is, uh, plus equals. Jeez plus equals, and then finish off that line. Okay, and then I'll move that up. So what this does in my in my else is uh, it adds the new quantity to the existing quantity. Okay, so that's what we're doing right there. So we're not quite done yet. We still have to do a, uh, a context dot update. Okay. And it'll be a cart item. And then after that, we've got the, uh, we'll continue on to, to save the changes and, uh, redir uh, redirect to action. Okay. So I'm, I'm back in my page and, uh, I've saved what I wanted to do. And I'm just doing an update, but nothing, I don't expect anything there to change. So what I will do though, is uh, I'm going to test this out and see what happens. Okay. So right off the bat, I'm going to delete these, this, uh, brother printer. Uh, are you sure you want to? Yes, I do. So I've deleted that. Okay. And let's go, uh, keep shopping and I'm going to test this out by buying another, uh, printer because as you can see, I've already got one in there. So my expectation is that this is going to update to two and then this number is going to be, um, that's going to be changed to a six. Okay. So keep shopping, uh, printers, I'm going to buy a printer and I'm going to add one to that add to cart. Okay. So there we go. Um, now what's happening is it's actually taking the price of one printer. Okay. And it did increment this to a six. That was a five previously. Um, but ultimately it's just, it's just getting the price of one item. So I think the next step in this uh, process is to start dealing with our uh, payment gateway. So let's go down to the bottom and actually just start building that out. And I want to just clean that up a little bit. Um, yeah, so let's start getting into that. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm going to start this payment function. Okay. So it's going to be an IA action result and I'm going to call it payment. Okay. And I've got this return view 
And of course it's in my shop controller just below the migrate cart uh, method that we called last week. Okay, so I'm gonna go and do a uh, right view, uh, or add view, sorry. And you may, uh, there should be some updates from uh, maybe previous videos, but you may or may not get this uh, issue if your yours is updated or not. So what you're seeing is MVC uh, view, and I'm gonna do this uh, razor view, and I'll show you what's different. Um, in the past, what we've seen is where it said add MVC view. Okay, so right now it's actually because of updates to um, uh, Visual Studio, it's probably going to say Razor View. Okay, so just to be aware of that, don't panic. That's uh, we're still okay with what we're doing. Anyway, to make this view, what I'm going to do is leave it as payment. It's going to be empty without a model. Okay, and then we're still going to use the uh, the layout.cshtml. Okay, so I'm going to add this, and you'll see over here on my uh, shop view, there's my payments. Okay, so if I close that down, I open that up, that's where we are right now. So now that we have the view, um, you notice that in the beginning when I was just testing this out, uh, and I was doing a checkout. So let me, let me go ahead and save that just to make sure. I'm going to run a build. Don't need to build it, but I want to just make sure. So if I go to checkout, so I'm in checkout and I want to populate that. I've already put a bunch of dummy stuff in there and I hit create. It takes me now to this payment URL. Okay, so that's all we've done so far. So at the moment, uh, the only thing we're going to put in here is a form tag. Okay. And everything else we're going to probably get from Stripe. Okay, so uh, and that'll be equal to a post. There it is. Okay, everything else is probably going to come from Stripe. So we're back up uh, top and I'm still in my shop controller and I'm in my, my checkout function. Okay, and one of the issues that we've got and it's this, uh, I just want to talk about an issue that we've got. So .NET Core doesn't allow us to uh, use or store complex objects like an order. Okay, but we still have to do it. So it, it only allows us right now to store integers or um, strings, but that's not really going to be good enough. So we're going to have to go to a third party um, uh, bit of code here so that we can actually do that complex object. Okay, so we have to do that before we can start building out the, uh, the, the stuff with uh, Stripe. So the solution that we're going to go to is from this uh, website. So talking.net. Okay. And it was February 14th, 2018 that he was done this. And he's created this uh, session extension library. Okay. For .NET Core. And it's to deal with this issue of not being able to have these complex uh, objects where .NET only allows you to have integers and strings. So what he's done is he's created this, uh, this extension and there's the set object and then down below it's a, uh, a, a get. Okay. So what it, what it's going to do is, um, we'll bring this all into our code, but you know, when we want to use it, it's now a set object and a get object. Okay. So, um, just make sure that you can navigate to this web page and find this. Um, the URL is talking.net.com store complex objects in ASP net core session. Okay. Uh, and if you're following on YouTube, fine, that's great. Uh, if not, I'll post it up to uh, my Blackboard page as well. And so you've got the access to that because we're going to need this code. Now, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go to my Georgian computers in my solution explorer, and I'm going to do a, I'm going to highlight it, right click, and I want to add down the bottom a class. Okay. So uh, it's a class and I'm going to call it uh, session extension. 
okay? And just hit add and that pops up. And basically what we're gonna do is put the, uh, the code from the website into there. So one thing from his website I wanna show you is that he uses this keyword static, okay? And that's because now if we put static in there, we can um, call methods without creating an instance first. Okay, so I'm gonna take that word, copy that. I'm gonna go back to mine and uh, I'm just gonna put that in there, uh, call it static. Okay, and I'm gonna add a, a note just above that. So it says, um, so make static, Uh, so that we can uh, call call the methods without uh, creating an instance first. Okay, and let me just spread that out a little bit. Another thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to highlight that. Okay, I'm gonna take that URL and I'm gonna go back and add another comment and put that in there and say uh, the source of this code is, and I'll just pop that in there, okay? I'm gonna save that so I have it. So another benefit to doing that is one, I'm kind of giving uh, credit to this person. Uh, but the second thing is what happens if down the road, uh, the extension no longer works. Okay. He's made some changes or code has done some changes. Um, uh, or like visual studio has made the changes or who knows, but at least now you've got, uh, access to where that is. Okay. If something breaks in there, you know where to find it. You don't have to try to search your own uh, internal hard drive on top of your shoulders. So inside the uh, class, what I've, I've got is two methods. Um, I've got my set and the, the get. Okay, so I'm gonna go and get those. I'm gonna copy those and go back to my code there and I'm gonna paste those in, okay? Okay, so you get these, uh, you've got a couple of errors in here. That's okay. All it's doing is looking for references. So if I go to this one, uh, show potential fixes, and it's this one's looking for the ASP.netcore.http, and I'm gonna accept that. And you see on the first line, uh, line one, right here, it, it took that reference. Now this one here, uh, let's see, show potential fixes, and this one here uh, is called newtonsoft.json. So that's the one that I want to use. And apparently uh, this developer created uh, this JSON uh, reference and uh, Microsoft didn't even bother to create their own. They just said, okay, yours is now the standard and they refer everybody to this one. So that's the one that we're going to use. And if you notice, it says it's not Microsoft.json, it's newtonsoft.json. So kudos to that guy uh, for inventing this thing. So right now at this point, uh, I've got everything in there that I need. I'm just gonna actually clean it up a little bit, uh, just in terms of formatting. I, that's all I'm doing. Uh, to be honest, guys, I'm a little bit anal retentive about my uh, formatting. I'm, uh, I'm not a big fan of spaghetti code. It really upsets me because it's so hard to read. Um, I think that you should always take advantage of the real estate you have on your screen. Um, more is better. I don't think putting everything onto one solid line is, is very useful, especially in terms of debugging. So anyway, I like to have very, very clean, clean code. Okay. So anyway, I've, uh, done that and I've just run a, a build on it because, uh, this is C sharp. So I need to build and not interpret. So I'm gonna go back to my uh, shop controller. Okay, and um, I remember I've got this note, we'll need an extension to the .NET Core session object to store the uh, order object. And I said in the next video. So 
the good news is we're already there. Okay, and um, now that we've got the extension, I'm actually going to comment that out because we're not going to need it. Okay, so what we have to do is now go and call um, that session that we just, uh, or the, the class that we had just uh, created. Okay. Okay, and now that I've, I've commented that out, uh, what I'm actually going to do is um, I'll put a comment in there. Uh, we now have the uh, session for the complex object. Okay, and then I'm, I'm actually going to, my line is going to be somewhat similar, but uh, hopefully you will be able to just detect the difference. But if you notice here, what we're saying is set string. What this is going to allow us to do is actually set an object. So if I say HTTP uh, context, uh, it, it's very similar to the to the last one. Set or session dot uh, set. Okay, so here's the issue, right? So we have uh, set integer thirty two set string. Okay, that's what we had previously, but now we have the set object. That's what that class allowed us to do. So we can call that set object. And now what we're going to do is instead of the cart total, we're going to say order. Okay. And we are going to call the actual order that we have in lowercase. Okay. So that's, that's how we've mitigated that situation. So this order is what we're talking about up here. Okay. So this now securely stores all the information about one object on the server. Okay. Uh, so this is on your server and that's where that's stored. It's all securely stored in one object on the server now. So what I've got here is, uh, I put it in, uh, under week eight shopping cart, uh, this, um, I'm giving you the Stripe payment gateway links. And so this is the, uh, registration. So dashboard.stripe.com, uh, register. And so what I need to do is actually go in and, and do that. And I'm, because I'm posting this to YouTube, I'm not going to put my email address on there, uh, because it's just going to open me up to an enormous amount of, uh, hate mail and spam. So I'm going to go ahead and register and it's going to send me a confirmation email as well. Okay. So if you're following along and you're, you should be doing this anyway, uh, go ahead and get your, your Stripe account. Okay. There are other payment name on there. Okay. So welcome Tom, but then it's got this tab right here that says, uh, activate your account. Okay. So we're going to have to go in there and activate the account and do all that stuff. But something I want you to realize is that, um, we're please, it says, please activate your account to access live data. So right now we're viewing everything in test mode. Okay. I'm going to go to this activation. Okay. And it brings us to this, this page here. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to have to start populating all that stuff. So while I'm looking around on the, on the, uh, the Stripe dashboard right now, one, uh, one of the things I do want to talk about is we go to this developer. Okay. And then keys. So like I said, you know, we're in test data, but when we switch over to a live, you know, that's going to change to actually in a, a live account. But you see here this um, publishable key, okay, in this token, it does say uh, test, okay? And notice it was created today, uh, today's date. And then if I click on this reveal test key, okay, that's, that's, um, that highlights that there, okay? Okay, and all I did to get that was I just sort of, I, I went back and then came forward. I'm just trying to hide that thing. Um, so anyway, now what we have to do is I'm actually going to go over to Visual Studio right now. So right now what I, I need to do is update my NuGet package manager. So I'm going to go to tools and halfway down NuGet package manager and then manage NuGet package packages for solution. Now click on that. Okay. So this opens up here and it's looking at everything I've got installed, but I want to go to my browse. Okay. And look at this here. Uh, this is that newtonsoft.json 
by James Newton King. It's been downloaded 569 million times. You know, think about that if, if ever it was possible for that guy to have collected one penny. Okay, that's pretty awesome, but I, I, don't, I don't even know if he got paid for it. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'll go into uh, this browse and I'm going to type in Stripe. Okay, uh, with an E. Okay, that's what I was missing. So uh, there's um, there's more than one one stripe here. Okay, so what I've I found the first one at the top of the list is the one I want. It's stripe.net um, by Stripe. Okay, and that's been downloaded 4.89 million times, and uh, I can guarantee you they're making money off it. Okay, so I do want to install this. So I go to my project and make sure that I'm in my Georgian computers. Okay, and then the latest installation version is 37.24.0 and it says it's not installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the install on that. You'll probably be prompted to uh, accept the install and so go ahead and do that. So the installation's completed, but I wanna just go over to my, my packages here. And you can see down at the bottom, um, stripe.net 37.24.0 was installed. And check this out. Look what look what's being used is the uh, newtonsoft.json. Okay, so uh, it's got its own uh, stuff in there, the configuration manager, there's a DLL in there. So we're, we're in there, we're good, okay? So, now I need to go into my apps settings.json file and you'll see this allowed hosts. Okay, so I've got to put mine in there and I'm gonna do a comma right after the uh, asterisk and I, I, I'm gonna go with uh, this. So uh, stripe, okay, inside that, uh, it should be capital. I'm gonna go with capital, stripe and uh, this here and then I'm going to put this into some brackets okay and I'm going to call this one because that's what um, Stripe uses it'll be publish publish uh, is that spelt properly uh, key okay so they're just variables that I'm putting in and then uh, this here comma and then the next one I'm going to put in is secret key uh, that should have been in uh, quotations. Um, sorry. Okay. And quotations again. And then I'm just going to close out that bracket. Okay. So I have to go back into my account and get that those two separate, uh, the publishable key and the secret key. Okay. So I'm going to go back in and look for my key. Now you're seeing uh, this number is exceptionally long and I don't honestly, I don't even know where it ends because it's all jumbled up on, on the screen. So I'm going to copy that and um, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to put the key in. Okay. And I was kind of lucky there somehow that I, I grabbed it seems like something is missing. Uh, anyway, I'm going to take this entire uh, line here. I'm going to control X, put this in my publishable. Okay. It's a ridiculously long number. And then I'm going to go back to my test key and copy and go back. I'm going to do the same thing because I, I don't want it to uh, see all this junk down here. I don't want to include that. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to take that out. Um, I'll control X and then right here between that, uh, control V. So I've, I've got those in there and I don't seem to be getting any errors right now and make sure there's this, uh, comma between the numbers. Okay. So, uh, one thing to note is the, uh, um, publishable key is a key that could end up being seen by the, the users, but the secret key is never going to be seen by anybody. Okay. Now going back 
to uh, my dashboard, there's there's one thing I haven't done, okay? And that's, I haven't activated the account uh, with all of that information. I'm gonna see if I can get away from doing that because it's asking me for things like my bank transit number and currency and all that kind of stuff. My full name, date of birth, social insurance number. I, I'm gonna see if I can get away with doing this without inputting all that first but I may have to come back and add all that stuff in afterwards. Okay, so just, just be aware uh, that if we do have problems, I may have to come back and do that if it doesn't let me. So back in Visual Studio, what I've done is I've just moved my files around to make it easier access. So I've got my uh, apps setting.json open, obviously, because I just did stuff in there, my startup, and then my controller. Okay, so because we have a bit of an issue, this the shop controller, um, it can't read app settings. Okay. So we can't go that way. So what we have to do is actually use the startup file to get to it. Okay. And then once we do that, uh, we need to make the, the changes to the startup and then we can pass the, those values over to the controller. Okay. So the bridge between shop controller and app settings, uh, is the startup. Okay, so we've got to go in and do some work in here in order to pass those values over to here. Okay. So right now I'm in my uh, startup file. Okay, and I'm in my configuration services method. Okay, somewhere around line 30 on my screen. And just below this uh, add session, I'm going to, I put a note in there, it says Stripe, and then make configuration value uh, from app settings.json available to the controller. Okay, so that's pretty much where I wanna I, I want to start doing this. So at this point, I'm gonna do uh, service. Okay, services. Uh, dot add, and you'll see here. I'll be looking for singleton add uh, singleton right down here, and. We'll just do um, uh, I configure. Uh, see if it's in there. I configuration. Okay, and then we'll close that out, and we just pass uh, configuration. Okay. This allows all of our controllers uh, to read those keys that we're putting in here for Stripe. So I'm highlighting over this and you, I'm going to read this note. Okay. It says represents a set of key value application configuration properties. So for example, if I wanted to add a, like a Facebook login or a Google login or something that requires a key value pair, uh, this is what we need to have in there so that, um, uh, all our controllers can see those, those key value pairs. My other controllers don't need this. Uh, but my shop controller definitely does. Okay, so um, I'm gonna, you know, this is this is what we need in the in the shop controller. Okay, uh, so now I'm gonna go over to my uh, shop controller and go to the top. Okay, go up to the very top of this thing. So I'm back up here at the top, and I'm uh, I got this comment in there that I put add configuration uh, to controller. Um, so controller can read config value app setting dot JSON. Okay. And I'm going to do uh, private, private, I config, Let's see if it's in there. Uh, no, it's not giving me like a config, um, Okay, and it's gonna probably, yeah, I didn't want that. Okay, second time around, it'll let me do it. Okay, and just add that little underscore there. And obviously I'm missing a reference up top, so I'm, I'm gonna just accept the uh, configuration and that popped up here. You can see the extensions configuration and that went away. Okay, so that's underscore configuration. 
So I want to spend a minute, a bit of time talking about this right here. Okay. Because this is important to understand that this is something called, uh, uh, I don't know if I spell it right. Okay. This is dependency injection. Okay. And what's happening here is that, uh, every time we call this controller, uh, it's getting past the database. Okay. So, um, you need this inside this controller so that when you start this up and you're you're passing it uh, or you're, you're creating this uh, shop controller it's getting sent the connection to that database okay so um, this is something that we're going to have to spend a bit of time on uh, not too much but i think we got to modify this to continue on so in this case what we're doing is we're, we're passing this object to another object okay so if you look in uh, other locations you know, we're passing a string here as an example. Um, whereas up here, it's an object being passed to another object. So a uh, slightly different scenario here. So let's continue on. Just uh, for clarity, I'm going to, I'm going to add a little comment about that. Okay. So that's accept um, an instance of our uh, db connection uh, class sorry uh, and use this object connection okay I'm just putting a comment in there okay and by the way dependency spelt with an e So I want to make a little comment there, this, this underscore here that I've, I've been using throughout. That's just a convention because this represents an object that is actually being injected. Okay. So that's why we do the, the underscore here. Uh, and I've done it again here. Okay. So if you go over to, uh, let's say the product controller, here's another example. We've got dependency injection again. Okay. Because we have to connect to, uh, we want to connect to that database. So all of them have this dependency injection, uh, most of our controllers. And again, then that was scaffolded and, and, and stuff like that anyway, but, uh, close that. And I'm going to go back to that. But the, one of the issues is now for, for hours is that um, we've got to do an update on that. Okay, and so what we're gonna do is also address the whole Stripe stuff. So I configuration and uh, configuration. Okay. So right below that, I'm gonna put in a new comment and I'm gonna say accept, um, an instance of the configure configuration object uh, so we can read app settings dot json okay and then what I'll do is I'll do underscore uh, configuration accept that and initialize that to um, configuration. Okay. So what we've done now basically is allowed, uh, access. Okay. To those keys. So any kind of keys that we want to take from an outside API, this is the configuration that has to be done to allow, uh, access to those keys. Cause if we don't have that, um, it's, you know, going to turn around and say, I, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. So I don't have access to what it is you're pointing to. What we've done is we've added our keys, uh, in the apps setting .json. Okay. Then we went to our startup and we added this line here inside the, uh, uh, configure services method. Okay. And then finally we went to shop controller and we added this line here, the I configuration, and then we just updated our, uh, dependency injection. So that's what we've done so far. And I've saved this and I've already built it. 
uh, and nothing has uh, shown me an error so far. And a point to note is that we absolutely will not see any changes uh, to our website whatsoever, okay? I'm back in the uh, controller, uh, the shop controller, and I've gone down back to the bottom of the controller where we set up this payment. And I put in a couple notes, okay? So the first thing is we're gonna set up the payment page to show order total. And right here, it's gonna be uh, get the order from uh, the session variable. Okay, so uh, what I wanna do is we've, we've done the set, now we gotta look at the get object. Okay, so I'm gonna call this var uh, order equals HTTP, um, this should be context. So I HTTP and I'm looking for just HTTP TP context dot session. Okay. And this is going to be the get, uh, get object. Okay. So remember this wasn't available before it was just uh, get int or get string. But since we created that class, um, now we can do that and it's, we'll close that off and it's going to be uh, order. Okay, so we're doing some casting here as well. Okay, and then uh, this is order. Okay, and just close that out. I'm gonna also update my note and uh, cast as an order object. Okay. So we're getting it and we're converting it back into a variable and we're gonna store it inside this order variable. Next thing I'm gonna do is uh, use a view bag to display the total and pass the amount to Stripe. Okay, so if I do uh, view bag dot total and this is gonna be uh, order dot total. Okay. Turns out Stripe doesn't like um, decimal values, so they want to see this all in cents. Okay, so um, let's say something is uh, $10.99, they want to see it as uh, $1,099. Okay, so we've got to do a view bag again. Okay, uh, and I'll call this cents total. Uh, and this is going to be, uh, I think, so order dot total. And I'm going to have to multiply that by 100. Okay. And we'll put the comment in there that says uh, Stripe requires uh, amount in uh, cents, not dollars and cents okay okay so i want to go to my uh to uh, my app setting.json i'm going to double click on this publish publishable key okay and i'm going to right click and copy it because i'm going to need this for in a second okay but notice that uh this is uh this string shows that it's called stripe okay and this is the, my json file so when I go back to uh, what I was doing, I've got one more thing to do. I have to go and get that. So I've got to do a view bag, okay, dot, and I'm gonna paste this. That's why I, I copy and pasted it. Uh, because if I spelled it wrong in any way, then then I'm, it's gonna just introduce an unnecessary order, uh, error. So underscore configuration, okay, is gonna be dot uh, get section. Okay, and that section is actually the uh, stripe. Okay, so that's what I'm getting here. So when I was back over in my JSON and uh, my section, that's that get section, go get this. Okay, because what if this was a different thing like a Google or something like that inside my allow hosts? So, uh, or Facebook or something. So I'm saying go get the keys from the stripe section of my JSON file. Okay, and then uh, what else do I have to get out of there? And I'm gonna use my square brackets and I'm gonna paste that publishable key again, 
Okay, uh, let me undo that actually because I need it to be in uh, quotes. Now I go there and then I can close that out with a semicolon. Okay, so I'm gonna save that and build it. Okay. At this point, what I wanna do now is go over to my uh, payment. Okay, so we, we created that view uh, earlier, but I'm gonna go in and do some uh, updates. Okay, and I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna add an H2. Okay, um, and in this, okay, I think what I'll, I'll put that all onto one line and I'm gonna just say um, order total with a semicolon. Um, and I'm gonna do uh, just some stuff on formatting. So at string uh, dot format. And I'm just putting all that stuff in there now. So uh, curly braces and it'll be uh, zero colon C for currency and close that out and just pass that. Then we're going to uh, call that view bag, view bag, and it'll be for total and close that out. So it looks, I got everything on there. Um, yeah, that looks right. And now I'm gonna go back inside my, uh, my form and I'm gonna do some, some JavaScript in here. Okay, so this is gonna be a script and a source, so SRC, accept that. And you know what, just as a good tip, whenever possible, accept the uh, except what Java or except what Visual Studio gives you for its IntelliSense, it's pretty helpful most of the time. Okay, I don't know why I just took that out there. And I'm gonna do HTTPS uh, colon forward slash, and we're gonna call this checkout dot stripe dot com and forward slash check. Okay, it's important to have this spelled properly, dot JS. Okay, and then after that, I'm gonna do class equals um, stripe button. Okay, stripe button, and then we're gonna do this. So data amount data amount, and that is gonna be equal to the uh, a view bag for sense total. So uh, at view bag dot sense total. Okay, get out of there. I'm gonna do another data again, data uh, name. Okay, I don't want that template, but it's gonna add that template anyway. So I'm just gonna have to kind of get in there and edit that out. Okay, so data name, and this is gonna be uh, Georgian. Okay, with the little hyphen in between. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do data uh, dash currency, and the currency is gonna be uh, Canadian. So, uh, currency equals uh, CAD. So that's, uh, CAD is what Stripe wants to see. So that's Canadian dollars. Uh, and then the last thing we need is the key. Uh, and the key is going to be uh, at view bag dot, and I hope I still have it in my uh, control V. Good, publishable key. Okay, and then I'm just gonna close out the um, I'll, I'll just close out my script and put my script down below because to me it visually it's a little bit cleaner to see that okay so I'm gonna save that I don't I don't see any errors um, I don't have to build this or anything like that because I just I don't uh, but everything looks to be running okay and tighten that up okay so the moment of truth let's get in there and, and test this out so I'm back in my cart Okay, and I'm gonna to go to checkout 
and I'll fill that in with all that pre-populated stuff that I had. Uh, 100 somewhere drive, GTA just for a joke, Ontario, whatever. And uh, sure. Now, I, I know I should probably change this to next or something, but that's what we got from scaffolding. And I'm going to hit the create. And there we go. Okay. So we got the payment and the order total. And the one thing that's missing here is my uh, pay with card. Um, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm not sure. I'll go in and investigate why that, uh, that's not there. And it should have been, um, my stripe button. Okay. So I got to go in there. There should be another button right here that says, um, that we called a class on stripe button, but I might've done something wrong. Yeah. This right here. I don't know why that's not actually firing properly, but, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll figure that out. So the good news is, um, we populated everything in our cart over to our payment page. Okay, so that's what we really wanted to do. So I ended up having to pause the video for a minute because I uh, made a couple of really simple, simple mistakes. Um, I actually didn't spell this uh, stripe properly. Okay, so I went around, I went to uh, snob overflow for a while looking for all these reasons why I wasn't getting the button, but I changed the spelling and voila, it works. Uh, the other thing I did is I, I, I actually took that little hyphen out of there. Um, now I did go ahead and test this. So what I'm gonna do is uh, let's go back to, see I was on snob overflow and every other place. Anyway, so I'm gonna do a uh, checkout. Okay, and do I wanna, I'll put all my data in there and I'm gonna hit create and you see that it's still processing, okay? And now this pay with card button shows up. Okay, I click that and I took that little hyphen out, but this is the, the page that I'm expected to see. Okay, so I can put all my card info um, and then my remember me and hit the pay button. Okay, now really important that you notice that over here, I'm in test mode. Okay, update available, I'm in test mode. Okay, this is not live yet. So it's really, really important that you understand that at the moment. Okay. So I've used Stripe before. Um, and I'm going to put uh, my email. At uh, tutorial.ca. And if you use 424242. That's actually the test number, but what I'm going to do is just for, uh, you know, whatever it's see, as I type in that four, it starts to say, okay, we're now we're looking at visa. Okay. And now if I do, uh, let's do, um, an out of date. So zero one, uh, 19. Okay. So last year. Okay. And then, uh, CV one, two, three, I'm going to hit, remember me. It says, uh, for security, please enter your mobile phone number. Okay, we use Stripe to uh, securely store your payment info for quick checkout on this site and others. Okay, so um, I don't have my, uh, for. I'd have to put my phone number in there, right? So I'm gonna do, um, I would put my own phone number in there. Okay, so uh, all of this stuff, so I can't have an expired card, it's gonna validate that. Uh, for being um, true or not okay so let's let's just hit pay see what happens so it doesn't like that okay right off the bat and I, and I took the remember me thing out of there and close that down so if I take that down uh, and now let, let's let's go back and do 4242 okay 4242 4242 and one more time so I think there's 16 digits there and I'm going to update that to uh, 21, 2000, January 21, and say that that's that. Um, and I'm going to hit the pay button. Okay, you did not set a valid publishable key. Call Stripe, blah, 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 uh, with your publishable key for more info. Okay, so let's see what's going on. So I've gone into uh, the, the Stripe... Um, you can go into here, into your, just type in um, Stripe API, stripe.com docs API, 
and then go to here and just type in um, testing. Okay, testing, and it brings you to this page, and I think I'm in it about five times. So it says right here, uh, non-authentication, default US card, and then authentication required. Okay, so there's that 4-2. Okay, and then you can read through some of that stuff in there. Okay, um, international test card numbers, America's um, card numbers for 3D secure test card numbers. You can get in there and start reading through this documentation. Uh, talks some about um, expiries and things like that. Okay, so if you're going to be doing this, make sure you get in and start, uh, you know, read through all this documentation on here. So for now, the thing that we were interested in was this, okay? So I, I think what's happened is uh, when you look at the, the error that I'm actually getting, uh, when you look at the error, uh, what's happening is it says uh, you did not set a valid publishable key. Okay, so go contact Stripe, uh, blah, blah, blah. And I, I think what's happening is, remember I said we have to activate our account? Um, I, I, I suspect that that's the issue because I'm getting this super long, long key here and it's not normally that ridiculously long. Okay, so that's a concern that I have. So I think what I'm gonna do is go in and activate my account and then I'll come back and we'll see if that actually helps. Okay, so I want to tell you a story. I paused the video and I and I was testing this out and I could not find a solution to what the problems I was having. And then I went back and I looked at this because I was getting this error in my code about that, about my publishable key. And then I came back here and I realized that this is supposed to say key. So when I was typing it in, the IntelliSense actually introduced that uh, keyboard and I wanted it to be key. All right, so I, I honestly spent at least, I'd say 45 minutes trying to figure this out and that was the error that I had. So I did everything right, but the uh, IntelliSense injected the word keyboard instead of just key. So I'll save that. I've saved it, okay, and now I've gone out and I did test that, okay. So I got my, my payment. So I wanna go back to, uh, back to my, um, payments or sorry, back to, into my, my dashboard here. Okay. So it sent the payment through my test data and let's just see if it updates in here. So it hasn't updated in there yet. Okay. So, um, it's a, it's a really strange thing that just did happen to me. And, um, what do I have in here? What's going on? So I, I've got everything all connected the way I, I needed to be connected. And when I ran it, ran that test, um, let's, let's just do it again. Okay. I'm going to go back to my cart. Okay. And I'm going to keep shopping. I want to change. I don't have any values in there. I'm going to, I'm going to get me another one more printer. Okay. Cause you can never have too many printers, I guess. Okay. So now I've got three printers and that's the value. I'm looking for a payment of 17, um, 80 or 98. So I go to checkout. I don't know. I could put all this stuff in here. That's all dummy info. Hit the create and you see, I get the value that I wanted. It goes there. And now I hit pay with card. One thing I do know is make sure your expiry is not this year. Okay. And I'm just going to put one through two, three. I hit payment. You can see that it's crunching, right? You can see that it's actually uh, authentic. And now look, I get the check mark. My payment went through. Okay. So let's go back in here. And you see that um, stuff is happening. So I've got two successful requests, it says. Okay, so it looks like my last one. Okay, and if I click on that, it gives me all this information about my two previous payments. Now let's go and see if I can uh, find the money. So as it turns out, I still don't have a, a charge on here. Okay, so... Uh, I've got to go back in, do a little bit more modification before I can get this to update in my Stripe account and see what my uh, the, the charges on, to the cards have been. Because at this point, all we're doing is an authorization, okay? So when I go back to Stripe into my dashboard and I look at um, my developer logs, 
you see that I've got two valid posts. Okay, that's all we've actually been able to do so far. So one thing I want to do is right above my payment is I want to I want to put that authorize in there, right? Because I want to make sure that this is only happening for authorized users. Now down below, I need to, um, uh, I think I need two things. I need to get two things back from Stripe after authorization. And the two things that I'm going to want is a string, um, I think uh, Stripe, uh, Stripe email. Okay. And then the other thing is going to be another, another string and that's going to be a uh, Stripe token. Okay. So with that, then we can get inside here and I'm, I'm going to do, um, uh, I got to add a couple of things here as well. So I'm going to move all this down because I got to put, I need to put uh, three annotations in here. Okay. And the first one being, uh, authorize. Okay. After it's been authorized, now we want to do uh, HTTP post. Okay. And then finally, because uh, it's good practice, we want to do validate. Okay. Anti-forgery token. Okay. So I put those in there. So what I've done now is um, I've gone into this second payment method. Cause you notice, um, you know, we've, we've got a payment method up here, but I'm overloading this payment now with these two items, this Stripe email and the Stripe token. And now what we have to do is we've got, uh, five things that we still have to do. Okay. And then we're not doing a, like a, a return view. What we're doing is a redirect action. Okay. So the things that we have to still do are send payment to Stripe. Then we've got to generate and save the new order, uh, save those order details. And then we actually have to delete it from our cart because once the order is accepted uh, and we've got the details and everything like that, we need to send it over to our payment and then take it out of our cart. Because if we don't delete it from the cart, it's always going to persist inside our cart even long after we've made the payment. And it'll go in a constant cycle where we'll just keep getting billed over and over and over for the same items. And then finally, uh, once all that's done, then we're going to do a confirmation of the order and then provide a receipt to the customer. Okay. So down in the uh, redirect to action, this is something where we're going to send out the details. They're going to know the order. And... Um, you know, when, if let's say there's a problem with their order, okay, it's going to have all that information on it so they can contact the store and say, Hey, where's my order? This is my number and provide the details. So to track down what's going on with the item. Okay. So we still got uh, a fair bit of, of, of stuff to do. Um, so hopefully maybe you had a chance to pause the video and go for a coffee and come back. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's get into the next part of this. So just for uh, clarification, okay, uh, just note we have the two methods called payment. And I, I hope at this point you're familiar with something called overloading, but it's basically saying that uh, we can have two methods called payment, but it's got a different signature. And the reason it has a different signature is because I've, I'm passing in two parameters. Okay, so I just wanted to clarify that in case you were looking at this saying, how can you have two payment methods? Okay, so uh, first thing I'm going to do is here um, is to to send the payment to Stripe. Is I'm going to do uh, Stripe. Uh, it doesn't show that for me, and I'll show you why. Um, Stripe configuration dot API uh, key. Okay, and that's going to be equal to uh, so this configuration dot get section okay and uh it's going to be stripe okay and i gotta make sure that i spell all this properly so i don't feel like getting into a whole whack of crap okay so uh now i'm gonna put the square brackets i'll put the uh, quotations but i'm gonna go back to my um uh, apps setting now i'm gonna copy and paste that 
because I don't want to take a chance on getting the wrong spelling. So I'm going to paste that in there and put that. So show potential fixes. Okay. And this top one here using Stripe. Okay. That's the one I want. And then the error actually goes away. So this API key is fine. And then configuration get section Stripe and secret key. Okay. Something that may have uh, come up on your screen, uh, and, I, and I don't know yet if it has, but it's going to, is that you, you may have started to get this error, an error here on uh, line 202. Uh, where else did I see it? Uh, up here on your uh, 155. Okay, and it's because of this. There's now two order classes. Okay, so... Um, You've got your order class that we had that we created in our model, but Stripe has its own order class. Okay, so that when you add it in this line here, it accesses the Stripe library, which has an actual order class. So now your system wants to know, okay, which one am I talking about? So if you get a, uh, a chance to do a show potential fix, you want models. Okay, we're talking about models. Okay. Uh, not the stripe one. So uh, where's another uh, situation where it may arise? So 202. So it came up here again as well. Okay, in this get object. So this should be models.order. Okay, so that's something that uh, likely will come up for you. Um, uh, and there's, there's one more area that I know that it's going to come up again. Uh, so I'm going to go below here and I'm going to say var... Uh, uh, cart user name. Uh, I'm just wondering if we, okay. So cart username equals HTTP uh, context dot session. Okay, and this is a, like before, a get, um, get object, uh, is it a get, yeah, it's a get string actually. I want get string. Um, and we're looking for this now, uh, cart, cart user name. Okay. And I'll close that out. So right now we're getting the, the username in the cart. So now we're going to do our items var, uh, cart items will be equal to, uh, context dot cart dot where okay so accept that one there and uh, just like before okay see uh, username let's see it should be cart username uh, equals equals uh, cart username. Okay, sorry. I just not doing so well on typing as usual. Uh, so now we have var order equals uh, HTTP context dot session dot uh, get object. So now we want the get object. Okay, and this is where, uh, this is what I was talking about with the models. So if I just do order, uh, and then close that out with, uh, uh, sorry, uh, order, and then close that out. You're seeing I'm uh, getting this error. Okay, and that's that same thing I was talking about before. We want the models. Okay, so show potential fix, order model, okay, and that error goes away, okay? So now I wanna do one more thing, uh, and actually I'll put the comment in there too. I'm gonna do a new Stripe, new Stripe payment attempt. Okay, and I'm gonna do a var, not car var customer 
it's important that I actually do this right. Uh, serve service equals new customer. Let's see if it has a customer service. Okay, uh, new customer service. So it's going to pick it up with the IntelliSense in a minute, but I because I screwed up the spelling, uh, which I know you guys love watching. Uh, charge. Service. ES. Charge services. And actually, I want to change that to, yeah. So that's fine. Charge service equals new. Uh, charge. Let's see if it's in the list. I'm looking for charge service. There it is. Okay, I'm looking for charge service. There. Okay, I'm gonna save that. So there's more in the uh, Stripe library that I wanna get, and I'm gonna make a new customer. Okay, uh, equals um, customer service. customer service dot create so I'm gonna to go to the stripe library for this okay so new uh, customer create options okay and well that's gonna be a method uh, something didn't okay interesting this actually shouldn't be here uh, that should have gone down there and close that out. Okay, so we're gonna add some things into this uh, new uh, customer create options. So I've just added in a little note here. So uh, when we look, I think we did a little example there. We had to put in our credit card number and our email, the uh, the other code and the date. So we need to put in the uh, email and uh, that's the email that we're typing into it. So we type it into the Stripe form and it gives it back to us. Okay, so well, this will be email equals uh, Stripe email. Okay, uh, I think that's a, a, should be a, wow. Should be a comma. Okay, and then source equals uh, stripe token there okay so that's good I'm gonna save that so we want to attach the particular payment that we're trying to put in to that specific customer okay so now we're copying um, thing important things to us from our cart over to our order ID table. Okay, so I'm gonna copy my uh, uh, product quantity and the price from the cart and put that into the order detail uh, table. And the way I'm gonna do this is a, uh, for, a for each, okay, and this will be uh, var, item in uh, cart items okay and uh, do this now I'm gonna do a bar order detail will equal new uh, order detail okay and then from here we've got those items that we need to do the copying. So order uh, ID is gonna be equal to uh, order dot order ID. And we'll put in a comma. Okay, and then uh, product ID 
will be equal to uh, item dot product ID and then comma again and we got to do quantity quantity equals item dot quantity and finally price okay so price will equal item dot price okay and that should be it and I'm missing semicolon good save that so then next thing we're gonna do is uh, what we've done in the past context uh, dot order detail dot add oops it's this add and uh, order detail okay and then we're gonna break uh, let me move that up a little bit and now we got to go ahead and save that so context dot save changes okay there give me a bit of room there and save that we have to generate the order number so that's why up here uh, on this line uh, 244 I'm doing the save changes uh, the first time and then we're going and doing the copying and we've got the order number now we can do the save changes again so that's why I've got it in two lines and that's why I didn't do like having this line of code uh, just one time down on 258 I've got to do it in that sequential order so this part's not so bad okay I, I got to do another a loop okay uh, this is going to be a for each and it'll be uh, var item uh, in same same as the one above uh, like same signature but the only difference here is now it is uh, context context dot cart uh, yeah dot dot remove okay and that'll be we'll remove uh, our items from the actual cart okay and this has to happen after the save uh, I don't want that uh, what I want to do is now I want to do another save context dot save changes okay um, something seems out of whack this okay uh, control KD okay so simply that was our delete from the cart okay I'm gonna give myself a little bit of room save that and continue on I'm gonna update my note here too before I do this so uh, confirm with the receipt uh, for the new order ID okay so I, I need to actually update my parameter list now too okay so I'm gonna do a, a new uh, and this is gonna be ID equals order dot order ID okay there I think it's time to test it all out okay and we've got a little bit of testing to do uh, in the actual page and then if that's all working out then we're ready to do the final thing and that is a uh, like a confirmation page okay so let's uh, let's go back let's run this so I'm in my cart I'm gonna take out the uh, the printers just I want to change up that number so I'm gonna do a checkout put in all my information okay it takes me to pay with card okay and I gotta put my uh, and let's see what happens it looks like it's gonna accept it okay that's good okay and if it redirects me it shouldn't direct okay so it's redirecting me 
but I don't have anything. I don't have that page yet, that final confirmation page yet. So I've gone into my uh, server manager and I've run this query because what I did uh, just previously was my admin at tutorial was the user account I was logged in under, ran this query and everything under the admin that I had in my cart got wiped out of my cart and is now in my order details. Okay, so we've actually achieved uh, test number two. So that's, that's really good. So you can see that the product IDs that I had in there, okay, were product ID 01 and 1000, or 1001 and 1000. Those product IDs got moved from the product ID into my order details. Okay, and those are the order ID is 2000. So when you look up here at the URL, okay, that's my order number. Okay, so that's really good, really good right now. I'm quite pleased with that. So if I actually go back and then look at my cart, there, my cart is empty. So we're really in great shape here. Okay, so I got, I've gone over to Stripe and you can see in my payments that it's just done this. It says Georgian Computers Purchase, Customer Admin, and what time you can see uh, 6.22 a.m. Okay, so I think if you've gotten this far, that's awesome. Uh, I expect there's going to be bumps along the way. But what we've done is we've had our, we've populated our cart with products that we want to buy. We've gone to do the checkout with Stripe. We've done the payment. The uh, Once the payment was sent through, then what happened is it emptied out our cart and then it set a, sent a all of our info to the uh, order details, okay, which we still have to do. That's what that 2000 is. And then we confirm that it went to Stripe and that is our payment right there posted to Stripe. Okay, so everything so seems to be working exactly how we want it to, to be working. All that is left to do now at this point is to give the uh, give the customer a confirmation page. Okay, so the, the payment has gone through. We need to display a an actual confirmation page. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we've still got to make a controller. Okay, uh, and I'm gonna close my models down. I'm gonna go uh, make a controller that will then generate the view to display that information to our customer. So I will go over to my controllers, add controller, and uh, I want MVC controller with views using entity framework. Okay, and add. I'm in here and my model is going to be order Okay, and I'll stick to obviously my database, generate views, and we'll continue with the same layout view. And it will be called orders controller. So this has produced uh, a lot of things that are absolutely useless to me at the moment. Uh, but thankfully, I didn't have to do all this code anyway. Uh, I scaffold. I'm scaffolding, so that's good. So I don't need the uh, create, edit, and delete. All I really I'm interested in is index and details. Okay, so uh, I can go ahead and start deleting some of that stuff. I'll clean it all up. First, I'm going to go to the top of my controller and make sure that's uh, authorized. It's not, it's just not uh, tele IntelliSensing it for me. Okay, just can't spell, show fix, and add my authorizations, that goes away. 
I'm going to keep my dependency injection at the top here. I want to keep my uh, index and I want to keep my details, but I don't need this uh, create. I don't need any of that stuff there. I don't need my edit and I'm just closing it all down so it's easier to see. And I don't need any of my delete. I can just close all this so that I can, uh, when I go and delete it, it's easier. But I will keep this order exists at the bottom. So hopefully you haven't just gone crazy and skipped ahead and started slashing and burning because that would have caused problems for you. Okay, so from 47 all the way down to this 141, gone. Okay. And I'm really hopeful that I didn't accidentally include something uh, I didn't want to, but I don't see any errors, so that's a good thing. But I still need to go over to my views. Okay, so I've got orders. I've got uh, uh, create I don't need. I've got edit I don't need. And delete that I don't need. Okay. Now, in order to test all this, I actually have an empty cart. So now I have to go and shop and I'm going to make it really easy on myself. Uh, I'm going to get a printer. Okay. I'm going to buy a printer. I'm just going to get one, uh, add to cart. Then I'm going to do a checkout. All my info's in there. Create. Okay. And I'm going to pay with my card. And it will be admin pay for that. Okay. Notice my button goes gray. I can't double pay again. Now look at that. This is my order details. Okay. It gives me uh, order date, my ID, my total first name, last name, 100 somewhere drive, GTA Ontario and a dummy, all that stuff. So I've got the order in there. Now I want to go back and check out what's happening in here for my payments. And there it is. Okay. Here's my second payment. Oh, I refreshed it. Sorry. Here's my second payment. Georgian computers purchase at admin. Okay. Awesome. Kicking ass and taking names. So we still have a, a little bit of, of work to do. Um, and I want to see what this, take that out and, uh, okay. So this, uh, going to the orders URL. Okay. This, uh, takes me to that index page that was scaffolded and it, and it shows me some details about my orders. Okay. Um, it, it's all by my username. All that stuff is in there. Just like we saw on the, uh, Swift dashboard here. Okay, but this is a little more detail on our side of the, the site. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll put that back in there. Uh, there it is. So a little bit of uh, fine tuning left to do. And yeah, I, I don't know that I need edit or delete, but definitely details gets me to this page. Okay. And does back to list get me? Yeah. So those, those are navigating pretty good. Those were scaffolded on there. So that's just hitting the details or back to list. Okay. So I do have one big, big concern right now. And that is the way this uh, page is showing right now. Uh, I'm logged in to, under admin at tutorial, but if I was logged in under a different login, you'd actually be able to see this order detail. Okay. So that would be a confidentiality and security issue. Okay. So right now you're seeing the admin stuff, but if I was in here under, uh, customer at tutorial.ca, that other user would be able to see my information or my order e de uh, details. So not really cool. We got to go in and, and change that in visual studio. So we definitely have to do this uh, filtration 
Okay, and the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna do a var uh, user name equals user dot identity dot name. Okay, and then down here, what I will do is uh, just after order, I'm gonna do this little filter here. So where, O, oh, not zero, O, oh, um, close that off, and then a dot. Okay, so that will ensure that when the user's looking at their own order details uh, on theirs, they're not gonna get mixed up with other, they're not gonna see other people's orders on their uh, order detail page. And I should actually do this in, in both cases, right? Because I don't want, uh, you know, any details to be shown to people that it, it, those details don't belong to them. So I'm actually going to put that into the details as well. So I'm going to just copy the same line. Okay. And where do I want that? Right here. Okay. And then I'm going to update. Uh, where do I want to do that? Right here. Um, order. So this, this order line, okay, so order equals weight, context, order, I'm going to put that filter in there. So uh, where, uh, actually, I'll just spare you guys from watching me type equals username. So I'm going to put that right here. And okay, so that should provide another level of security. What did I do wrong? Order where ah, no uh, no semicolon there and I'll build that so I also want to update my nav bar okay for orders so I'll go back into Visual Studio and uh, start setting that up I'm in my layout page and I'm gonna do this right after uh, right after my cart button. So I'll place that right after the cart between cart and about. So here, and then I'll go in there and add that. And that's gonna be uh, for people will see that who are uh, logged in or authorized to be in there, okay? So, and that is going to be uh, uh, at sign okay so if uh, user is it yeah user dot or not slash dot identity um, dot is uh, authenticated okay then what we'll do is I'm just gonna copy and paste this all this so I can easily edit so copy, throw that in there and get over to this and start doing some editing. And uh, this will go to our uh, index and will be called orders. And of course my controller is orders. So we'll build that. So I'll go back to my, uh, okay, there, you see my orders. So if I go to cart, there's nothing, but if I go to orders, all my information is displaying. And I go to details, I get some info there. I go back to my list, I'm good. So what I've done is uh, I've actually logged in on a different page. Okay, so you can see I've got, uh, I've got two different accounts. I got customer and I've got admin here now. Okay, so as a customer, if I go to here and I can, I don't have any orders, but for the other one, because I purchased all those things under that and if I go to cart, there's nothing but my orders are still there. So customer cannot see 
uh, the orders for the admin. Okay. So that's what we were hoping to do on that last little bit. Okay. So I've opened up the, um, the details view because I, I want to look at my page and just kind of say, all right, I'm in my details. There's nothing really here that I can do any editing. This is all after the fact kind of stuff, right? So this has already been posted to my uh, payment account. There's, there's nothing here that I can edit. Okay. So I think I'm going to go in and clean those things up. I'll, I'll leave the delete alone, but details I want to be fine. But this edit button here, uh, I don't need. Okay. And I don't need the edit button there. So I think I'll, I'll clean that up a little bit. And I think then that's, that's going to be it. I'm tired. I think you guys are tired. Uh, I'm going to just knock it off after I clean up those two things. So all I'm going to do is literally go down to the bottom. I'm going to take that out. Okay. So I'm in my details. Uh, I'm going to just knock that out of there. Then I'm going to go back to index. Okay. And I'm going to take that out too. Okay. It's right at the bottom, my index view. So I'm in orders and orders only has those two views and that's all I'm in. And I'm going to, uh, I, I'm going to knock that out of there. I almost tried to delete uh, an entire view. Okay. So I'm going to save that and I'm going to, um, I don't have to build. This is all HTML stuff, but um, I'll go back out, have a look. Let's go to orders. Oh, that's my empty one. So I'll go to my other page. Okay. Open this up. I think I'll refresh that. Okay. And notice it's gone. All right. My uh, edit is gone and down here, my edit's gone. It's just back to list. So everything still works just fine. Okay. So, um, wow, this has been a really, really long journey to do the, uh, the, the checkout in the orders and all that kind of stuff. It's been, it's been quite long, a lot longer than I anticipated. So, um, I think what I'm going to do next week's video is, uh, probably a little bit on unit testing. I think, um, if I'm really lucky and if I can keep the video down to a manageable size, I may do a little bit of, uh, CSS stuff, but the way things have been going, I, it's unlikely that I'll get to that, but, uh, we should do a little bit on unit testing. Uh, you should at least understand more about what it is and how it works. Uh, so I'm going to finish off next week and do some more of that, but you know, we've, we've produced quite a lot on this website over the last, uh, eight or nine videos. Um, so if, if you're to this point in yours, that's absolutely outstanding. Uh, congratulations. You've done well and, uh, you can only hopefully get stronger from there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, uh, end the video. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.